good fine morning. Uh, I'm a little bit bummed. I had a bit of a computer hang slash crash and lost a lot of the markings from the last video I did. So I'm just going to start here, kind of fresh thoughts on what I've got on the screen. Um, bounce also some off of the last video, but I really don't watch those videos because it's these are all just continuing documentation. I've done most of this already. This is just more fine, more macro to micro than it is uh, something that I haven't really seen yet. Uh, just I haven't allowed the finer detail because it kind of get, it fills the head with a lot. So um, after losing all those markings, I've gone in and it started to just this is just a rudimentary set of oh, not I don't need a line here I need a circle uh, these are just eruptions of the past I have nothing necessarily significant with them and I just note them as Excuse me. I'm right in the middle of coffee this morning, so pardon my flatulence. I uh, I feel like this type of marking is is one of the things that has allowed and do if you're doing this kind of marking it up. Make sure that you're actually observing the feature to ensure that there is some sort of a clear indication that you have to mark it as you're marking it. Uh, circles aren't necessarily eruptions though in this area it has quite an interesting layout and I hope this is demonstrative of what I'm seeing taking place here. So as there is forced input, where uh, I was originally assuming Chicxulub, but if you're thinking Chicxulub at 65 million years, that's it's, that's input that I'm trying to put into this model as. Uh, as those P waves traveling all the way through the planet basically and but they're going to be traveling across the surface and they're going to go so far so there's going to be so much destruction from that and but anyways forget the the, the mechanics of that for now it's just the date 65 million years and then the CRBs are 17. That's a big difference. And so what I'm looking to do is I'm looking to explain the CRBs as having a forced impact or an input, an energetic input, um, something highly energetic that would have that, that could displace the continent mass, that could cause it to slide on a basically a gravel bedding um, and then uh, where period in points where some of that ground up gravel bedding mounds up in collections sometimes the metals and the oxides become reactive and we have explosions or steam you know the phreatic or the phreato what uh I, when I say words, sometimes the, the autism, I, I have to I go through all of the mechanics of the words linguistically to, um, to kind of tell myself how it's, the words are working um, or how I'm using them and how the potential... Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Um, so 
sorry, for that. Uh, tangents. Tangents are valuable. Um, so, as this is stretching out from some sort of a, a forced input, I'm, I'm conflicting with myself on these dates. There's such a great degree of size here and what seems to be type. So, a couple of these, several of them, some more so than others, uh, have the appearance that there's more water involved like there's water rushing out of it where was that eruption I just can't remember So the thought process with that was that any appearance of a mixing of water and magma is going to be the description of an uplifted plate coming back down and having pressurized fluid underneath it that is collected. And then it has to figure out somewhere to go. Um, I haven't sought the information to find out if what kind of um, study has been done on fluid pressure and, and creating extreme heat with fluid pressure but I there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to um it seems like the physics of trying to pressurize water and then you take a well rock compared to water in this case has an incredibly weak constitution because you try to pressurize next to each other the water will bust out the rock so there's this I feel like there's this invisible world of function and extreme pressure that we quite don't necessarily understand we do understand it but it's just not like it's not explained simply enough we're just oh oh yeah you know um but so 65 million years ago and 17 million years ago and then you start going down the clock for the Yellowstone eruptions where it's 17, 16.7, 16.5 and it goes down and that can't be coincidence it cannot be coincidence I would also argue that the placement of many of these eruptions here is not coincidence because they happen to be in spreading zones where the range has endured extension and then in that grinding process caused eruptions. This is one of those watery what, what appears to be a watery eruption this is this has like a pillowed effect or a pillowed appearance not saying it looks like that when you get on the ground but from this angle that's what it looks like and it it appears that there was water coming from all directions like this was a massive geyser at one point Also something we haven't seen, we haven't seen uh, a mixed example where uh, volcanism and hydrothermal eruptions like Old Faithful are where one takes over that space. So uh, 
At least I haven't seen it. Um, you see it on the margins where on the edge of the volcanic zone. What are these dots? I'm, I can't stop staring at them. Bizarre. Those dots took my attention. I'm sorry. So in this spreading, in, we've got all these eruptions. Let's look for eruptions that are happening. Oh, this is a neat collection here. See, these are all up in domes of upwelling. Now, it doesn't look like Know, there's just dozens of them and it doesn't really appear that all of them actually erupted they just filled up this may have erupted here uh, some of these other ones did this was a man this was a wild zone here okay so let's just put a couple Okay, so the idea is to look within the range here. So we have this bit of range that's been, well, I'm not going to say it's gone anywhere. Maybe it's just sat there the whole time, watched everything happen around it. So this one sitting here, I want to look for eruptions to the right or to the east and then to the west and seems to be that there's quite a few but these are this seems different to me this type of uh, feature I'm seeing as being a, a there's a lot more ground material it's hotter um, the this is a lot of mud with evidence of precipitated minerals that come after the event as the water subsides into the continent Is, is that not a fantastic ripple pattern or what? default for terrain exaggeration is point well I want to say it was one so the entirety of the Pacific Northwest has some really interesting ripple features the ripple features continue from the greatest part of the north here where we've got this Cupid's arrow at the ejection point. This is the main, this would just been just a spectacle, uh, a fantastic spectacle of rock and everything else you could imagine shooting down this giant torrent of water and just carving 
the landscape to crust. So this point, I'm going to, this was mainly the main purpose of this video today is to try to visualize a similar to the potatoes BC North, how these potatoes work here, um, visualizing the CRBs, which I have, I wasn't smart, oh there it is, I did name it. Believe it or not, unbelievable. Okay. I think that's pretty good. I did look at a map when I when I put it on there. So we have the CRB. The monolithic like monolithic isn't even the right word for it. it just what a slab. She's a beautiful slab. Um, just gosh I literally haven't since I put this pin that says CRB origination point since I put that pin there I haven't actually had the CRB on there So let's go look at the coastline here. The interesting features, I love these. They look like ripples, but I don't believe they're ripples. These are coastal margins. They're as the continent was subsiding to the east. There were these periods where it would stop and jerk and try to try a little bit more to stop and then try a little bit more to stop and then and, and just have a, a series of, of jerks and jolts as it did. Um, I would like to think that those were in some sort of an earthquake record, um, but that'd be kind of difficult to correlate. So, we'll put every, try to put everything back together. You know, I want to seventeen million years, though. So let's just include South America in this. We might as well because it can't. That's one of the limiting factors is that every time you go and try to do one pit of, bit of work with, say. North America, then you have to also say, well, you, this is what happened as that was happening. And I mean, not necessarily in such a short time frame, but um, you can't leave South America out of this because of the such a the great movement that it went through to create the range from Peru up through Ecuador. Colombia. I did I say that right? I'm I always check myself. Colombia, Ecuador, Peru. Wow. Wow, dude. Nice job. You should be checking your work. And if you say something, maybe 
go back and check. So what happened here in Peru? This is also something I haven't put in the videos yet. Um, I have, I'm pretty solid on this. Uh, did I say, I said Peru, um, South America. She's got a bitter past, boy. Okay, let's just, instead of looking for unnamed polygons and whatnot, I'm going to jump straight to the unbelievable point. I'm not, not unbelievable, but just mind-boggling. Much of the eastern portion of South America has been stretched out. So there's a period where it didn't exist and it was pulled away and it gained a larger size by being planed out. Same thing happened with the south of the country and basically you end up with a continent mass about like that. And the reason why is because there was attachments. So there's other m continents that are attached to this that I haven't quite gotten to yet. Um, so just the noting the study um, out of respect here, I'm going to actually find the authors of the study and I'm going to cite this in this video. So just a moment. Okay. Here we've got the article in the Smithsonian Magazine. Try to get rid of the ads. I don't need to see that stuff. So, we just want to note the, that in this paragraph here, a recent collaborative study from the research of Columbia of Europe at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute reveals that the Sierra, Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta has traveled 1,367 miles from the northern Peru to its current location over the past 170 million years. Now, dates are pissing me off again. 170 million years, 65 million years, 17 million years. Maybe, maybe it's just shorter together. Maybe millions, I don't know. I don't know how to not be able to say how did this destruction not actually be all of the reason why that happened in North America? Okay, so we have this 1,367 mile trek. I will show you the trek. Here we go. Let's look at their picture. My picture. My picture, their picture, my picture, their picture. My picture, their picture, my, 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 my. 
anyways, um, we know what we're looking at here. We know who they say did this study, yada, yada, yada. That was in 2010. It's been a minute. So, there's an incredible rotation thing happening here. And the reason why it's happening is because it's believed by, my gosh, that's not the right, hold on. <laughs> I hate using the word believe in this context. Uh, so, we have quite a bit of rotation here. Let's see if I can need to be here. <sighs> it's not easy. So this, this polygon that I just created, I'm going to give it a color. No points to delete. Uh, that's, yeah, right. I know. I want to do that. And we're going to go. I wonder if dark blue would be. So, just for the record here, this portion of Peru is the portion that moves to complete the journey for this 1,367-mile trek that Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta took. Um, and in this case, it's Peru that took the trek not the mountain. As, as all of this draws back up, the plate begins to rotate. As the rotation is occurring, it's gathering up this mountain range back together again. This zone is slipping this direction falling in to the pocket down here sort of these portions are also sliding this portion sliding these round the ranges are reconsolidating to a section about here. And for as much as I want to say that I'm completely certain about everything, I'm only mostly certain about this. So I'm not afraid to be wrong. I'm just going through it on video. So gather back up these ranges again, flip We've now, we're going to have to go complete 180 with this blue polygon here. Now this red chunk is the chunk that dives and carves out the Caribbean Sea. It's also the, the point where the ridges, the mountains are shoved up and built very quickly so in this quick mountain building event they're loosely consolidated they're very subject to 
the conditions around them. So where um, the types of erosion can be rather extreme. Lots of landslides, so on and so forth. Um, and, and I think that's what you end up seeing with the, just look at the history of landslides in Peru, South America, it's pretty awful. Um, and that comes from these, from this quick mountain building event where it's just, it's pulverized debris, rock and debris. It's not just, uh, it's, it's ground up pretty well. So, the, I want to draw attachments. I want to say this piece moved here, this piece moved here, this piece moved here. I want to go through all that. But this is where I start to feel like it's not fair. It's not, I mean, there's people that have been studying their particular regions for decades and that this is their fun in the sandbox for that place. So while I can contribute so much, I feel like I gotta stop at so many of these places and say it's, you know, there's much finer detail that can be worked out by people who have had better hands in there. And um, so, I, I would be uh, it would be the wrong thing for me to do to try to complete every bit of this model so in anybody has the idea that I'm being I don't know for whatever weird reason you think I, I'm being weird for the way that I'm publishing the way I'm publishing I it's just the way it worked out for me you know, this is what you get from a kid that grew up in a group home and has seen a lot of weird things, awful things, and, and took a long damn time to grow up. And this is what you get. So I don't really care. I wasn't really, like, supposed to be my career or anything. I was just, like, doing a thing and then ended up finding out something. So here we go. Um, we have the an event that it can explain this range building event that occurred that would have created this island chain here, the archipelago near Puerto Rico and Haiti, Dominican Republic, etc. Trinidad and Tobago. I, I, I don't want to leave anybody out. Like, like I'm not looking at you here, but I'm looking at you. Um, So flipping that back around, I think there's a, a fair chance that there was some rotation on the, oh, yeah, I don't want to say that, no, but just at the coast of North America, the north of, of California is going to bow out this oh, I don't want a polygon path And then we had, there's going to be tearing that occurs up here. And we know that there's tearing because at least for this portion, the entirety of this ridge is seen as push debris at the margin of the continent as it slides. So 
basically or as it subsides as it drifts you know, you, many words in the English language to explain how that's moving um, another helpful oh, let's save that first and I didn't I didn't finish that sorry I'm gonna finish that Well, that can't be right. Surely it's going to need to be refined at some point. But just a, a visual a visualization. So North America ends up starting to change its shape and, and bow out here. The range in BC consolidates back together again. The uh, this massive rift and slide where this in inner portion of the range where the coast didn't seem it, it same, it's kept its consolidation as much as it could there's some periods where or points where it there's movement but the the darker red or the brick red is seem to be a little bit more resistant to that movement um, so as it's changing its shape and it's pulling out there or pulling out into the Pacific I see especially this section here pulling south more maybe you could say that whole but really this and you can see sort of a a, a pressure like a mounding of the ranges there in a uniform way that is to me the visual indicator of this north north to south subsidence or range failure and extension or, or basin failure in this case um, and so pulling I'm going to draw a little polygon around this because it looks like it's a slightly different unit than directly next to it on the on the eastern portion so now as this is uh, not a polygon or a path This has this all of Southern California has been pulled down by the uh, South America pulling to the south. And this moves up as well. And so in doing that, what ends up happening is the ripple starts to straighten out. So that instead of being here, this ripple starts to come up this direction, starts to fill this space here, and then these this portion of range you can see this this valley that's like this channel here and see it would seem like that would be sufficient to explain 
that this is a unit sliding trying to go further south because the Sierras are trying are going south and, and expanding the southern portion of the basin um, So now, if we kept going that, using that method to explain how this is all moving back up to the north, then what I'm seeing in happen here is that this all comes back together again in a more northern orientation and the chute where all of this I'm going to turn off the CRVs for now This shoot lines back up up here where there's it starts to look like did blasting water rip the terrain apart I don't know that it seem it doesn't seem sufficient it's like you still have to go with the continent tearing away here or South America tearing away out here and pulling south and then as it pulls south it grinds and flattens the seabed here and then in the final throes of attachment there's rotational examples in here there's uh, examples of plate resistance where it's trying to stop and then breaking free again and these ridges here these seamounts are directly describing a peeling south in a way. And I've, I've noticed that sometimes visualizing that way really helps. So I've explained that Peru actually dove below the surface of the ocean. Well, I don't know. Can we say that? I don't know if that's fair to say. Maybe. Um, but dug out the Caribbean Sea. That was a mountain building event that created this loosely consolidated range because it was con created as a ground up material rather than rock slabs colliding and so that ground up material ends up in a mound that has uh, was, there's the inland of the coast so and out there's different there's variations to uh, land features the way it does change so maybe that influences the way the the range came apart in what appears to be sort of strips. There's this outer strip and then there's this inner strip. Um, probably a better way to describe that mechanically with some good uh, drawings on it. Um, so I 
I don't could it okay so trying to visualize the story 65 million years ago Chicxulub comes down the Chicxulub impact happens um, and boom there's a whole bunch of there's a massive ex excavation the model for the expo eh, eh, excavation the model for the impact is it's it's astonishing it's like the impact takes over five minutes to complete and to me that is mind-boggling if it's taking five minutes, what did they say the speed of that impact was? How does it take five minutes if it's only, uh, I think they said six, six kilometers wide? Oh. In diameter, uh, estimated to be 180 kilometers, 110 miles in diameter. And then I think it closed. And they're putting Beaverhead as a smaller impact. <sighs> um, I would like to just, I, I respectfully take that input but I think I want to just throw dates out the window or like impact size that idea because you're looking at so you want to say that everybody says that Chicxulub was the dinosaur killer just because that's the one they found in that date range um but what a beaver head. Was there mass extinction 600 million years ago? I don't think so. Let's see. They only, the extinctions note, it only go back 445 million years, late or division. So, we're, we're, have, we're speculating that the Chicxulub, being at roughly 110 kilometers in diameter, was the dinosaur killer mass extinction event and the beaver head is unlisted but by all means 
should have had ample energy to cause the same type of destruction but not noted as 600 million years ago so the feel like the dates of these events or not or just time periods are a bit like uh, a, a bit like walking through a, an Egyptian archaeological site and and being really drunk and staring at hieroglyphics um, one thing we can't reason is that if you materials are consumed by the earth at a rate that I, it's hard for us to fathom and like the Antikythera mechanism it's there, there's lots of bronze there that survived I think it's bronze um, but it barely survived and there is a long time period where there's been people around before well, well, well before that even. And so if you were to think that that was there and it barely survived, then that would almost say that for certain that there's a plethora of material that just could not survive because it just didn't fit the half-lives of that would make it so we could visualize it today and then some things you have that when humans put them together into the useful form that we use it as then sometimes they persist in that but a lot of times they break down even faster or cause other things to happen and then we don't really see that original thing anymore. So I just wonder uh, how much of the dates are conflicting, how much uh, where maybe maybe a speed bump got went over at some point and the numbers just jumped a little bit. Um, so uh, trying to reason further some of this movement and I want to say that at some point these ripples that I was working on bringing back up to the north a little bit um that at some point the ripples straight now I'm gonna put a rude just a rudimentary I want to say something like So the reason why I'm putting that there like that is because I'm seeing this as the wall, what, like where the there's the ice sheet on the continent, and of course it, it it's it would be eaten by the saltwater sea. So 
of course there's going to be a, a coastal margin there and as as that's moving as that's building up and, and compressing the range at, at the coastline then it has I'm just seeing this ability to build a trough here at the where all that all of that is pushing the mountains together and then if you're shoving mounds of rock together then there's going to be some heat underneath and that heat's going to melt some of that ice that ice is going to let off quite a bit of water and other stuff that jets out of some place and it continues across the landscape and destroys more and more and then you can get down this far and then you're destroying down into the CRB and What is this, the chemical depot? I think it is. Umatilla Chemical Depot. Yeah, that's where we used to keep our stinky weapons. God, that's a fence. <laughs> I'm not looking at that stuff, honestly. All I wanted to see was this parallel striations that run right through the middle of that darn place. And the striation is interesting. It's hard to tell uh, if there was any kind of like dozer smoothing, which sure probably was. But I wondered whether it would be, um, there's parts where land had scraped over the surface and that this the the purple potatoes that movement happened before wow I want to call them ripples but I mean there's it shows the, the water blasting over the crest of the ridge. So, I mean, it, they're ripples. <laughs> it's, it's, this has got to be ripples. But these, uh, I'm seeing these as being created after, after the range fails. So, now we're talking Beaverhead is, is, Beaverhead, a downhill point where uh, there was an excavation leaving void where that flooding material could go down into. Um, it would seem to fit. The only qualm I'm having with this movement here is it appears that there could be a lot of drift occurring. But I don't want to, I, I would hate to just go and take, just because you've got one line here and then one line, and then you can kind of, kind of say that this point sort of goes this direction, but 
I'd, I'd want to see more, but I know that I, I'm pretty sure that that's what's happening. The why is because at some point here, with all of this movement, there's going to be a pull shift, or the pull is going to be migrating. It won't. It can't stay the same. Uh, the hydrostatic equilibrium of the planet is dependent on the large ice mass Antarctica and I think there's enough there on Greenland to to say that if those ice if that ice shifts then the hydrostatic balance of the planet changes that weight isn't there anymore and the pole will wander we see the pole wandering today um, it's not where it was 10 years ago and so we just know that there's a mechanism behind how that's working um, we have tidal bulge as a constant feature we still have the mystery of the 20 I think it's 26 second pulse um, that the planet has for whatever reason um, <laughs> that's just that's baffling I'm, maybe maybe I can figure that one out I don't know um, so with the pole shift so now we have one of the things that I always flip back to and I do it less now because it's more built into my thought process but I would think to myself okay the earth is moving or spinning this direction so we'll just make it look like that and so it's moving or no I'm sorry if the it's counterclockwise so I have I usually use my hand to be completely fair and honest I don't use an arrow on the screen I use my hand so counterclockwise you rotate the globe and you start to see ah now the arrow fits the arrow fits because that's the inclination that's the direction of the subsidence so if you do that and you're understanding that in the centrifugal force model you have more inclination to move towards the equator at um, let's turn the grid on so at the, where these squares get bigger just say there's more inclination to move to the equator at the bigger squares so in that from the Tropic of Cancer to the Tropic of Capricorn there's more movement there that's like that that's like a tidal bulge but tidal bulge would be uh, dynamic and this would be static I don't know not static So we've got the counterclockwise rotating sphere and we can sort of see now like if you watch it rotate and you see where the continents are you can see why those bulges why things pulled the way they do um, when you can see the same thing in even in uh, Australia will be a little bit more complicated to describe or just different 
complicated to describe. But for this, it's easy to see for me anyway it's easy to start to see I don't know that that's a that's that's a little too far um, and I don't want to I, this is hard to um, these lines don't speak f the way my mouth wants to so we have a lot of rotations, extensions, range failure Basin failure, basin extension, basin inundation, um, a plethora of instances that must be reassembled in reverse order to be able to reconsolidate the Yukon range, which reattaches the Yukon back to Siberia, which pulls North America up into Yukon territory which at that point would change where the poles are the change for pole is a super complicated problem for me I don't know how to reason with that um, it, I feel like it has to go to some sort of an, an analogous model where you, you're you actually physically testing well, the balance points. Um, and I think this can be done. Uh, this is a an excellent way to, to start at the end and then map back to the beginning. Um, I'm frozen to as to what to say now. Um, so we if we put that back up over there, get or back. I said nothing there. If we put that back up over there, sorry. I will ridicule myself. I talk to myself sometimes, only occasionally, not that many. Um, get this range consolidation. Uh, done time reversed plate migration uh, drift what have you um, back to some sort of a like everything used to be here kind of idea and I still it's incredibly difficult to say what I don't want to uh, I don't want to solve other people's puzzles there's still a lot of work and detail and, and aha to go through as they're sitting on hillsides and valleys and looking at road cuts and and mine excavations and, and all the all the ways that we can now understand why the KT boundary is the way it is and why we lost more than 80% of the life on the planet at that point um, possibly start to come up with a method to see past uh, the natural decay of the world to 
other forms of evidence for past civilizations and, and human habitation? Or is this just the Goldilocks period? And we're just super duper 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 lucky. You wouldn't know. Um, but this has gone an hour and ten minutes. I'm going to stop this one. And then the next one. Um, so, well, after... Let me not stop quite yet. I will... We can almost erase South America as it is, reattach it to North America and call it just about the same shape. It'd be a little bit different, but just about the same shape. So the next one, I'm going to go over to Africa and I'm going to describe a heartbreaking situation with Israel. Palestine and I think I know why you're arguing over your neighborhood take care